What is going on everybody? Today I'm going to be telling you everything that you need to know about prefabs in Unity. Here we go! So in order to tell you exactly what a prefab is, I need to tell you a story. So there is this juice making company. They make juice and they make all different types of juices, but they have to make a bottle to fill with each type of juice. So they have grape juice, cherry juice, apple juice, they have all different types of juices, but they have to make the bottle to fill with juice. So they build a factory of bottles. They build all of these empty bottles with the factory, and then they fill each bottle with all of the types of juices. The empty bottle is the prefab in this case, because the bottle is a template for filling with customizable things. And every bottle that's filled with juice is the instance of the prefab. So you have your cherry juice, your grape juice, your apple juice. Those are three different variations of the bottle, which is the prefab. So you have the prefab variations. So how would I apply this into Unity? Well, you can basically make anything you want using prefabs. They are basically a saved template of different objects that you've created. So let's say that you have a spaceship, right? You have a prefab of your spaceship. You have it saved into your project file, and then you bring it out into your project and you use it. But let's say that you want to have a second spaceship that has a higher speed. Well, all you would have to do is just drag the prefab into the scene, a second prefab, and now you have a second instance, and you can adjust the speed as you want. Prefabs are super, super powerful for ease of workflow, and this is why we're talking about prefabs today. So I'm gonna hop into Unity and show you exactly what you need to do. So I'm just starting out with an empty scene here. Now, basically, all you have to do to make a prefab is you would hit the plus key in the hierarchy, and then just basically add anything you want. So I'm going to add a cylinder in this case. It can literally be anything you want, so it doesn't matter what the object is, just as long as it's an object. So I have the cylinder created here, and let's say that I wanted to have cylinders in different colors. So let's say I wanted a red cylinder, a green cylinder, just like the juice example that I mentioned, cherry juice, apple juice, etc etc so I'm going to go into my materials and let's see if I have a red material so here's a red material I'm just going to plop that red material on if you don't know how to make materials here's quickly how to make one you would hit the plus key in project and then click on material and then you can name it anything you want and then select the color that's how you make a very basic material but I've already have a material here so we're going to work with that so I have my red cylinder so to make this a prefab I'm going to just call this red cylinder in the hierarchy just for naming conventions and then I'm going to make a new folder I'll call it prefabs I've already made it but I will make it again you hit the plus key you hit folder and then you type in prefabs now prefabs can go anywhere you want so it doesn't matter if you make a prefabs folder or some other type of folder, they can basically go anywhere you want them to go. But I'm just going to drag the red cylinder into the prefabs folder. So now this is a prefab. We have the prefab icon here, and if I were to drag it out, as you can see, it already has the red cylinder already made for us. Let's say, let's say we wanted to have different colors though. So I'm going to duplicate this by hitting Control D, that duplicates it. So now we have another version of it. Let's say I wanted it to be a green cylinder. So I'm going to use my green material here. It's just green. And I'm going to just make it green. So now what I could do is I can now drag it into the prefabs folder. And what will happen is it's asking if I want to make an original prefab or a variant of the prefab. Basically, a prefab variant still stems off of the original prefab, but it is just a variant of it. So in this case, I'm going to select prefab variant. So basically the red cylinder is the original prefab and the red cylinder variant, I'm actually going to name this to green cylinder. 
and then I'll just say variant here. This is a variant of the red cylinder. So as you can see, we are making different types of cylinders here. Now basically, you can do this with any type of object as complicated as you want. I'll show you an example of that right now. So this is a scene that I am working on for one of my larger projects, and as you can see, there is this giant spaceship here just floating around in space. Now as you can see, the spaceship's lights on it, if you look at the little dots, are blue. Now this is a prefab of mine, but I can change anything I want about the spaceship. Behind me, I have the same spaceship, but in this case it's a variant, but there are red lights. So basically, you can make as many variants as you want and change it as much as you want without affecting the original prefab. And this is really powerful if you want to have two of the same prefab but are variants of each other, and this is a very good case right here. Just between you and me, I'm actually thinking I'm making a tutorial for how to make that spaceship. It's actually really easy, so if you want that, just let me know in the comments. So anyways, we are back in the original Unity scene. Now, what if I wanted to make a whole bunch of duplicates of this, and let's say I just kind of move them around here. I have a whole bunch of red cylinders. So what if I now go, oops, I just made a whole bunch of these. I placed them wherever I wanted. They are all in the scene here and there, but there was one change that I wanted to make to all of them. Do I have to change all of them in order for this to work? Well, no. This is exactly what prefabs are meant for. Basically, if I wanted to change every single one of these red cylinders, I could do it really easily by going into the red cylinder prefab. So if I were to click on it, and then I were to click right here in the inspector, if I were to click open prefab, this will allow me to do anything I want. So let's say that I actually wanted this cylinder to have a hat, right? So I can make a 3D object and I can make, let's see, a cube. And let's say, let's say, I, let's say I, I wanted this, the cylinder to have a little bit of a hat on it for whatever reason and I were to do that and there we go the cylinder has a little hat now if I were to hit this arrow right here this arrow will save the prefab and it will go back to the scene ta-da all of the red cylinders have hats on them hooray <laughs> so yes now here's a little thing if I were to want to go into one of these instances let's say I want to delete this cube I would not be able to do it because it's part of the prefab. It would basically break the prefab instance of it. Prefabs are basically packaged into things that you can't really modify once you have an instance in the scene. That's one of the drawbacks of prefabs, but there is a fix for this. So I can open the prefab and basically it would move it for everything else. Let's say I wanted to just move one ever so slightly without having to make a prefab variant. Well, the only way to do this is to unpack the prefab. So if I were to select one of these prefabs in the hierarchy, so let's say I will select this red cylinder, and I were to right click on it, and I would go to prefab, I can basically select unpack or unpack completely. This will get rid of the prefab instance and make it just one of any other object in the scene. It's not a prefab anymore. So now that this red cylinder is not a prefab anymore, basically changes to the original prefab will not affect it. So if I were to open the prefab and let's say I were to make this hat a little bit bigger, like that. That's a huge hat by the way. And I were to save this, it wouldn't affect this prefab right here. Well, actually, it's not a prefab, prefab anymore. It's just a regular object. So because it's not a prefab, it will not be affected. That is how you unpack prefabs. One last thing to mention is that you can also nest prefabs inside of other prefabs. So if I were to get rid of this and I were to add a red cylinder, I would first have to add a light back again. There we go. So, there we go. So now I have my red cylinder with its enormous hat. And let's say that I wanted it to be riding on top of the green cylinder variant. So what I could do is I can drag 
the green cylinder into the red cylinder and as you can see the green cylinder is now a child of the red cylinder so this is what we call a nested prefab even though this is a prefab variant it still it still means the same so now what we can do is we can have the red cylinder on top of the green cylinder so there we go that is also a nested prefab and one other thing that you might have noticed is that do you notice that the green cylinder's hat is also just as big as the red cylinder's hat well that's because the green cylinder is a prefab variant which means that when we modified the size of the hat onto the red cylinder it also was modified on the green cylinder and that's because the size of the hat was not modified on the variant originally. The only thing that we modified was the material on the green cylinder. So if you were to modify anything but the green material, the green cylinder would also be affected if you modify anything on the red cylinder. So that is a little bit more in depth as to how prefab variants work as well. So that was everything that you need to know about prefabs. If you are looking for further documentation on this, I would highly suggest checking out the official Unity documentation on this. I'll have a link to it down in the description. It goes into way more detail than what I just mentioned if you are looking for every single bit of detail that you need. So anyways, I would highly appreciate it if you haven't been subscribed already. Please hit that subscribe button as well as the like button and bell notification, all that stuff and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.